Uhura sees dead people. Kirk says some inspirational sh- But we both know the truth. Our job puts us up against death more than is fair. And people get sucked into space. Uh, there's a lot of stuff happening here, and I don't even really know where to start. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Our last past episodes of this season is, seems to be singled out on one of the secondary crew and the the dead people, which is kind of cool for us because we're huge Hammer fans, and that's yeah. who she mm-hmm. she was seeing, uh, z- sometimes a zombie version of. And then there which was, was cool. Uh, so you know the actor came back, put some makeup on, and it was kind of cool to to see that. The episode was another great Star Trek episode. This kind of reminded me of a few episodes. Uh, There was a Next Generation episode uh, that was kind of like this, but it was called uh, Quality Life. Dr. Farallon is coming aboard to demonstrate the device that carried out the repairs. And it involved these machines that were mining, and they became sentient, and Data had to save them. Please do not think this is an arbitrary decision. I have considered the ramifications of my actions carefully. And I do not believe it is justified to sacrifice one life form for another. And then there was a, of course, everybody knows the Voyager episode yeah. with mm-hmm. the, um, shoot. Ransom. The, Ransom, yeah, with uh, yeah. Uh, Equinox. The Equinox uh, double episode where he was using an alien species, uh, their body, basically absorbing their body to help push the, the work core along. We traveled over 10,000 light years in less than two weeks. We'd found our salvation. What we're talking about is you find out through the episode that someone is talking to her and she thinks she's losing her mind. And she's not losing her mind. She's, in fact, being talked to by this alien species. And when the station processes and refines it, we're basically torturing them. The alien species is living in that. So they're getting killed. And as you said, Kirk, Kirk was in this one. Why don't we skip to your news? Wow. There were some awkward moments between Kirk and Lan. I haven't forgotten that drink you owe me, by the way. This is the third episode with Kirk, and this is actually the only one that really counts, which is kind of funny. Liked Kirk a lot in this episode. I wasn't a big fan of the whole thing with him and Sam because the tone of it was really weird. Even if you choose not to use it, so I have to do something to keep up. You're making me look. That was kind of my issue with this episode in general. Everything going on with Uhura was so serious and dark. Seeing her parents and seeing Hemmer. And then there was sometimes it would break into random jokes that I'm like, kind of took me out of what was going on. And then immediately I thought about, you know, the Equinox episode. And I'm like, I don't remember any jokes just kind of flying around there. Please show them leniency. They were only following my orders. Their mistake. I I liked this episode, but I I found there's parts I really loved and there's parts I'm like, I don't like this at all. I don't know what they're trying to do here. One thing I always don't like, dream episodes. I don't like, for some reason, I don't like when they they use uh, dream symbolism because no one, no, none of us dream in concise details that movies and TV try to say that we do. Yeah. This kind of had like a dream sequence in it, although it was mostly just, you know, delusional things that she was seeing. You're supposed to be on medical leave, are you not? I did like the fact that Kirk was in it. I do. I am growing more and more attached to this actor as Kirk. Mm -hmm. I think uh, like Chris Pine, he's decided not to make a parody of William Shatner, but make it his own with his own set of bravado. And right now, death is winning. I absolutely got loved and got emotional when he finally meets Spock and they shake hands and yeah. him, Spock and O'Hara sit down at the table together. And it was like it, like a little bit of a fangirl. It's like, oh, this is it. This is it. I really liked when O'Hara was sitting down and she was kind of going through it and Kirk starts talking to her. He was two moves away from checkmate until you distracted him. Now he's in trouble. And she's like, I'm not looking for anybody. And he said, you know. You just look like you could use a friend. And the way he said it was so earnest and honest that I'm like, okay, I I really respect that. Then he gave, you know, a couple rousing speeches. I'm like, okay, I can see. I can see. Until a few minutes later when she's having an uh, episode and cracked him in the nose thinking he was something else. Yeah. That was kind of funny. She, She broke his nose. Uh, 
I absolutely did not understand Una Kane thing. Uh, yeah. The oh, engineer. Man. And then you find out you find oh. out really late in the episode. And you deserve that C. My final paper was meticulously researched. It was sloppy. That would have been something you would have put in maybe halfway into the episode, not at the end. Yeah. So you could understand. They had almost no chemistry to me. Oh. <laughs> Any underlying issues will become clear as we work. <laughs> yeah, it, no, well, it, it honestly came off like Rebecca Romaine, who plays Una, was pissed off. Like, yes, I, yes, absolutely. I kept watching right. and I'm like, I is she annoyed? She seems right. like she's annoyed to act with her. And I think you've gotten too used to being the smartest person in the room. <laughs> I don't think I'm the smartest person in the world. Oh, sure you do. Something that I don't like that modern Star Trek does, and old Star Trek occasionally did it, but it, they were always reminded of their place, is I don't like when officers that are beneath other officers talk to them in a way that you would never do. That is malarkey, and you know it. You're sloppy. I was not responsible for the data. It would be illogical to blame. Shh. Just... Learn when to leave people alone, Spock. Sorry. I can tell you from experience, and, and some of those know that I was, I'm was i a submarine veteran of the United States Navy, and there are certain officers that you get close to, and one of them on my boat was the CHOP, which is a supply, what we call the supply officer. When he he put down you know, a law or he, he gave you a, a lawful order, yeah. you listened to him. You didn't go, oh, F you, you're, you know, you're my buddy. Rules of precedent, captain, the commanding officer of command, the USS Alabama. Regulations I order you to place the XO on under arrest on six charge of Navy regulations. Yeah, um, it goes to my, my favorite quote, probably of all time for Band of Brothers. We salute the rank, not the man. She's just going back and forth, and I'm like, what is going on? And then she's not obeying her. And then, as I pointed out earlier, I was not a fan of what they were doing with the tone. And Uhura was basically kind of having a moment of remembrance for Hemmer, who was basically a mentor to her because she had lost her family. So yeah. there was there was terms of endearment there for me. And then she made some joke. She's one of my best students. I'm sorry, I just said that because he's dead. Actually, he was just okay. And I'm like, what? And I'm like, I love crass humor. I love dirty humor. I love dirty jokes. I love dark humor. And I'm like, but why? And we've touched on this, that the, the season's been about love gained and love lost. Yes. And this is definitely another, of hers. Another uh, yeah. version of it, yes. Oh, her, oh, her dealing with grief, uh, not only with the loss of Hammer, but it had stoked, you know, stoked up the loss of her parents and her brother, yes. which were in a shuttle crash. So she never had dealt with that that grief, and she had pushed it away, and much like she was with the loss of Hemmer. So it it was kind of neat to see her have to deal with that, and that yeah. these space aliens mm -hmm. were using her as a communication device, yeah. but using her, you know, like negative thoughts or grief right. to communicate with her. So it was kind of neat that they wrote that like that. But. I did like um, this kind of like me, reminded me of the Gorn episode last season, and they'd found a crewman that had been slashed, and there was blood yeah. on uh, ever that kind of thing. It was like, wow, this is this is kind of this is there something was... that I, the original series didn't even tackle. Yeah, there was two oh shit moments for me. The first one was when the bridge exploded, and you see, I love it. You see this absolute fear go over Pike's face and then Spock just gets freaking sucked into space. Transport, beam us out now. Right? There's a couple question marks for me. The first question mark is this: the importance of Pike being a fleet captain. Yeah. They really never went into that. And no, not really. And then as fleet captain, he made the decision based off of O'Hara's feelings yeah. to destroy that array. Uh, and, and maybe it's because they wanted the wow factor, uh, the producers or the writers. Just turn it off. I don't well, it wasn't just... working to begin with. It was barely right. working as it was. And it's like... Between us and the bulkhead, the whole project's been a fiasco. We're finally supposed to be online two months ago. Probably should 
make sure that's okay. I, I don't know that you're just allowed to do that. Well, and, and he even says, he goes, uh, if there's any blowback, it's on me. End of the day, that was my call. Like the Equinox episode, how it created the, the moralities that we all love in Trek. It should have been that, where it should have been, you know, if we lose this, we lose a huge piece in the battle against the Gorn. Well, we're also hurting innocent creatures, you know, and then going back and forth on it. And they, now it's just, all right, fire fair. It's just like, oh, okay. Overall, what would you rate Lost in Translation? I'd probably give this episode a B minus. It wasn't my favorite of the six episodes we've seen so far. O'Hara is kind of a flat character for me. I really want more out of her. I think she's a very interesting or could be an interesting character. Yeah. They need to give her more layers in, in some regards. Um, this episode also reminded me that they killed one of our favorite characters. But um, I do like that, it, again, it's a it's a standalone Star Trek episode. There are Star Trek tones and themes in there that we always enjoy. And, you know, part of it is seeking out new life, right? So yeah. Yeah, I'm probably a C plus. I there's things I really enjoy about this episode, and I think when that happens, it gets frustrating when there isn't other things that are really good. I, I like the concept of this interdimensional species being hurt. I just don't feel like there was any moralities at play. A lot of the ideas were really half baked in the execution. But what is the point of exploring if we're just gonna kill what we find? We can't shut it down. There'd be times when they would throw in humor that didn't really fit. And I wasn't sure if times were like with Kirk and his brother, if they were supposed to be funny, if they were supposed to be serious, if maybe it was both. It just didn't really come off right to me. And then the ending was just abrupt. I don't know. It, again, it's it's like the rest of the season where it's like there's a lot good there, but there's stuff that's missing. And I, I just can't quite put my finger on it. Well, we'll see what the rest of the season has to offer. As usual, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye, Thanks, talks. guys.